Pat has a very common description of how people wake up and tell us how they pass the kidney stone. It's not unusual to wake up in the early mornings or even the late evenings and have excruciating pain. If you haven't had a kidney stone before, uh, the worst pain in your life is, is really a fair assessment of how you would um, describe a kidney stone. Uh, Pat described it as passing triplets and when I've had women that have delivered babies, either C-sections or even spontaneous deliveries, they will tell you that a kidney stone is much, much more painful than even having a child. The common treatments for kidney stones that are available are actually twofold. One is extracorporeal shockwave lithotripsy. That's a big fancy word for blasting the kidney stone. The patient lies down on a bed. We use sound waves and x-ray to focus sound waves on the kidney stone. That is actually the most minimally invasive treatment option and is successful in about 65 to 70 percent of cases. Option number two is, is a scope therapy. And the scopes can either be placed in through the bladder or through the back. Now, by placing these scopes, we can actually visualize the kidney stone, and through these little tiny fiber optic scopes, we can actually use other forms of lithotripsy, including lasers and hydraulic therapy and pneumatic therapy, which essentially we break the stone under direct vision. There is a family history involved. A lot of the patients we end up seeing will have a significant first degree relative who's had kidney stones. Therefore, if you have a significant family history of them, you are at risk down the road and should take preventative measures. These are as simple as just increasing your fluids and watching your diet. In talking to my average patient, they always tell me they just don't have time to drink fluids. They can't find the time, they don't have time at work, their lives are so busy. I always try to discuss with them how long their commutes are in the morning and the afternoon. If you talk to most patients, and especially around here, they're in the car for quite a bit of time. So we always talk about taking bottles of water, and in just a simple commute in the morning and the afternoon could probably double their fluid consumption. Pat's kidney stone that you see is actually very common and routine. Most kidney stones are in the size and magnitude of just several millimeters. In fact, it's the small stones that cause more of a problem than the bigger ones. The small ones tend to move, on, move quicker. They tend to block off the little tube. But kidney stones can come in all shapes and sizes. This is a stone I removed from a patient who actually had a dead infected kidney and the stone was removed. This is what's called the staghorn kidney stone. As you can see, it's got branches and looks like little deer stag. Stones can get up very large. In fact, this is the, probably the largest stone I've ever removed. And this was in a patient who didn't even know he had a kidney stone and really didn't have any pain and just been worked up with blood in his urine. But if you have a family history of kidney stones, if you're on any diets and you start having pain, please think of kidney stones as a potential option and be seen by your doctor as soon as you can.